video. Performance benchmarking with Free Auto's implementation in the SparkFun ESP32 thing. In this video, we will look at the performance comparison between an Arduino Uno R3, ESP8266, and the ESP32. Finally, we will also compare the performance increase in the ESP32 with the implementation of Free Auto's multitasking and intertask communication. By now, you would have experienced firsthand the capabilities of the SparkFun ESP32 thing. It's no surprise that the ESP32 is indeed faster than any of the other boards we will be comparing. But in this video, we will find out exactly how faster the ESP32 is, especially with Free Auto's implementation to use that extra core that is dormant. Most speed tests out there use only some artificial software load to compare the speed of execution. But I have cooked up a simple yet powerful template code that can put a strain on the core by using both software and hardware loads. Please download all the codes from the resources section or access it from the repository downloaded earlier. Now load the Arduino Uno R3.ino code in the Arduino IDE. Let me explain the template code as it is reused for all other boards with slight tweaks here and there. In the code, we have first imported the math.h library so that we can work with the power function to find the power of value. The code will also have three functions. The first function is the double underscore power function, which takes in a variable of data type unsigned integer. It then iterates from zero to that number and on each iteration and finds the square of the number. The function also keeps track of the time it took for execution with the millis function and returns the value. Thus, this function adds a software load on the CPU. The second function is loop underscore GPIO. This function adds a hardware load on the CPU. The way we do it is by switching a GPIO pin on and off very fast for a specified number of times. Just like the double underscore power function, it takes in a variable of data type unsigned integer. It then iterates from zero to that number on each iteration and it quickly set the GPIO pin 13 high and low. The function also keeps track of the time it took for execution with the millis function and returns the value. The third function is the do underscore measure function. The purpose of this function is to set the input parameter count for both the previous functions and to take the sum of the execution time for both the functions. Finally, it will convert the execution time from milliseconds to seconds and prints it on the serial monitor. Inside the do underscore measure function, you can see that we have used a plus equal operator for these two lines of codes. This is done when we need to do a cumulative sum of two independent variables as shown here. If you go through the code, you can see that uint32 underscore t is used a lot. This is a data type called as an unsigned integer. It can hold only whole numbers, but no negatives. The number after the unit refers to the number of bits the data type uses. Thus, 32 bits can hold numbers from 0 to 2 raised to 32. In the void setup, we begin the serial monitor with the baud rate of 9600 as we are using the Arduino Uno R3. In the void loop, we have called the do underscore measure function, which will initiate the speed test on the Arduino Uno R3. After uploading the code to our Arduino Uno R3, I have opened the serial monitor and set the baud rate to 9600. After waiting for some time, I have got the result of the speed test. The combined software and hardware load took around 7.1 seconds to complete on an Arduino. Next, open the ESP8266.ino code in Arduino IDE. The code is almost the same as the Arduino Uno R3 code. The only difference is that we have set the baud rate of the serial monitor to 115200 and changed this text to ESP8266. Now after connecting my Node MCU ESP8266, 
I upload the code and enable the serial monitor with the correct baud rate. After waiting for some time, I have got the results of the speed test. The combined software and hardware load took around 2.5 seconds to complete on a Node MCU ESB8266. Next, open the ESB32 underscore single underscore core dot INO code in Arduino IDE. The code is almost the same as the ESP8266.ino code. The only difference is that we have added an instruction to check on which code the code is running. Now, after connecting my SparkFun ESP32 thing, I uploaded the code and enabled the serial monitor with the correct baud rate. The combined software and hardware load took around just 0.4 seconds to complete. Furthermore, it was achieved with just a single core, that is, the core 1. Now, let's unlock the true potential of the ESP32 by using Free Arto's multitasking and intertask communication. We will run the same load on both the cores at the same time. And we will use Free Arto's tasks and queues to implement a very reliable system. Open the ESP32 underscore dual underscore core dot INO code in the Arduino IDE. I will explain the changes to the base code. We have first added three macro definitions. These instructions save the pin numbers for the GBIO switching test for each core. This instruction keeps the size of each message in the queue that will be created later. The next instruction creates a handle for accessing the queue that will be created later. The double underscore POW and loop underscore GPIO functions are the same as the previous code. Before going to the do underscore measure function, let's take a look at the void setup loop. Here, we have set the pin modes of both the GPIO pins 13 and 14 as output. Then, we have created a queue with length 10. The size in bytes which each item in the queue should hold is based on the data type and the macro we defined earlier. Next, you can see that we have created three tasks. The first task called My Core Zero task is pinned to the Core Zero, and the second task called My Core One task is pinned to Core One. When you check the function definition for both these tasks, you will realize that both are calling the same do underscore measure function. So essentially, with this code, both the cores are running the same speed test parallelly. The third task called my result task is pinned to the core 1 and its function is to collect the results from the queue and print it on the serial monitor. Now let's discuss about the modified do underscore measure function. To understand the updated do underscore measure function, you need to first understand the need for a queue in the speed test. Ultimately, we want the time of execution for each core printed independently on the serial monitor. But let's say both the MyCore 1 task and MyCore 2 task send the result at the same time. This will lead to a collision and only one result will be retrievable. To avoid this, we created a queue in which whenever a result is produced by either of the tasks, it will get stored in the queue so that even if the MyResult task is busy, the result won't be lost. Inside the do underscore measure function, we will store the core ID of the currently running task to the zero index of the message array. Now, based on the core ID, we will save the time of execution of the loop underscore GPIO function starting from the index position 1. Then, we will implement a cumulative addition with the data present in the index position 10. This position has the time of execution of the double underscore pow function. Next, the total time of execution is stored in index position level of the message array. Finally, this free RTOS function will load the message array to the queue created earlier. The my result task will access the message array from the queue and extract the core ID and execution time and display it on the serial monitor. This is the full implementation of multitasking and intertask communication in the speed test code. 
Now let's see what are the results after uploading. The combined software and hardware load took around just 0.2 seconds to complete for a single core. Remember that both cores are running the same load parallelly. Still, it managed to do it two times faster on each core. To give a context of the upgrade in processing power, it will need two instances of the same code running parallel on both cores to reach the execution time results of the last test on the ESP32. This means that in effect, per core performance has increased twice and combined core performance has quadrupled. The per core performance bump was due to the implementation of queues. Queue implementation removed the need to override previous results, thus making the access speed of data much faster. The combined core performance bump was obviously due to the implementation of multitasking using tasks. Summary In this video, we have covered the following topics. Performance comparison between Arduino Uno R3, Node MCU ESP8266, and Sparkfun ESP32 thing. Performance comparison with and without free RTOS implementation on the Sparkfun ESP32 thing. Section Summary In this section, we have covered the following topics. What is a real-time operating system? Free RTOS implementation in the ESP32. What are tasks, queues, and semaphores? Implementing dual-core multitasking and synchronization in the Sparkfun ESP32 thing. Intertask communication in the Sparkfun ESP32 thing with free RTOS. Performance benchmarking with free RTOS implementation in the Sparkfun ESP32 thing. In the next section, we will learn about deep sleep in the ESP32.